Today's a very exciting day in the studio because I'm trying out a new gadget. We've got not just an Instant Pot here, but... <laughs> Oops! We've got not just an Instant Pot here, but an air fryer Instant Pot combo. And what's exciting about this thing is you're combining two appliances that both have a ton of functions in the kitchen. So the potential of putting those two together and having the power of an Instant Pot with an air fryer is exciting to me because there are so many potential foods that you can cook with both of those technologies together. And that's what I'm gonna be attempting today to really see if you could replace your entire kitchen. Is it possible? Possible. Obviously, I'm not replacing my kitchen, but if you, you know, were living off in the woods somewhere and all you had was this machine right here, could you survive and cook some amazing food with just the Instant Pot Duo Crisp air fryer? I don't know about you, but I am very excited to put this to the test. And you know how these air fryer videos go by now. It's just complete experimentation, especially with this unit, which I've never used before. And the way I'm gonna structure this video is it's gonna be broken down into eight recipes, but they're all gonna link into each other because I do not like wasting food on Pro Home Cooks. This is not the Food Network where you're recipe testing things like six times and just throwing them in the trash. I'm eating everything or my family's eating it or I'm giving it away. So for instance, the first recipe recipe is whole chicken. And I felt like I just had to test whole chicken in this thing. It was just the perfect machine to one, cook this chicken quickly through pressure cooking, but then get it crispy, get the skin and the exterior nice and crispy through the air fryer setting. But once I get a whole roasted chicken, well, I've got to use it. So that's going to tie into recipes moving forward. So the first thing we're going to do is season up this chicken and get it pressure cooking. So to shade the Instant Pot for this guy right here, rather than a recipe booklet, they just give you like every single ingredient, meat, veggies, fish, and then they tell you how to cook it. So chicken whole, eight minutes per pound. That was about a three and a half pound chicken. So we'll go around 30 minutes on high. Let's do 28, I'm feeling good about that. 28 minutes and we'll let this thing pressurize. Wow, I just gave the studio a nice chicken steam shower and it smells delicious in here, but I'm very excited to see what's going on under the cap. Woohoo! I don't know if it's cooked, but oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, that looks amazing. I'm a huge idiot. Just realized I could have used this thing and put that in there and then I could have used these things to pull up the chicken. Now I have to figure out a way to get that out of there. All right, never pressure cooked a chicken. You can see it's like falling off the bone in places, but this looks amazing. So what I'm gonna do is remove this and we'll save that for later. Not sure what I'll do with that just yet. And I'll probably coat this with just a little bit of oil and salt to get it extra crispy. Learn from my mistakes, I'm using this guy over this right here. I didn't wanna like stuff the chicken in there. So first time air frying, new lid goes on. Air fry. Okay, temp. Oh, it only goes up to 400. Well, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> you know I'm just punching numbers. I'm not reading any type of manuals. Uh, we're figuring this out together, guys. We just ended there. Let's see. Very <laughs> interested. Oh, all right. So we're we're getting crispy skin. Definitely needs a little more time. I would say another 10 minutes, maybe less. I'm gonna set it for 10, same temp, and we'll get after it. All right, here we go. What? That is amazing. I mean, this looks like rotisserie chicken to me and it was so easy to make. But the question of course is how does it taste? So the true test is putting a wing up against 
some white meat or dark meat against white meat because that's the hardest part when you're cooking a whole chicken is getting both of those right. So first we'll do this crispy little wing. Wow, crispy, tender. Now the chicken breast, so easy to dry out. That's pull apart tender right there. That's nearly perfect. So impressed with this right here. I never cook chickens in the oven because it's just difficult. It's a difficult test. They never come out like that rotisserie chicken you get in the store, but this tastes nearly identical to that. It's got all of the elements you want and it was extremely easy to make in this combo package right here. Now that I've got perfectly roasted chicken, I'm gonna be building my way up to a Mexican dish that is great for the air fryer, but there's a few elements in between to really bring it together. One of them being black beans, a staple of Mexican cuisine. But normally with black beans, the way I make them is I soak them overnight, then I slow cook them until they are perfectly tender. You definitely don't want your black beans out of the can. If you've never made them from dried beans, try it and your mind will be blown. But my brother told me about a technique where you can take these beans and you can put them right in the pressure cooker without soaking them and they come out perfectly. And I've tried it before with pretty good success, so we're gonna try that again right now. And I've got an idea how to use some of this chicken juice. So this was a layer of flavor that came off the roasted chicken, the fat that rendered out. So we definitely do not wanna get rid of that. Extra flavor. We're gonna pour our beans right in there. And then for this, boom, you remember that? That was from the water we added to the Instant Pot and all of those chicken drippings from the pressure cooking. Well, that's going right in there. So that was around two cups of liquid. Do we need more, Mike? That is the question. Yeah, we need more, just to be safe. Another cup of liquid in there. And we'll just pressure cook those on high for I think like 15 minutes. Let me check the chart. Would you look at that? It says right there, dried beans 20 to 25 minutes, soaked beans six to eight minutes. So Instant Pot is well ahead of it. They they knew about this technique. That's, where, that's probably where Josh got the technique. So let's go for pressure cook high. Let's do 21 minutes. Let's see, whoa. They look good, but are they tender? Let's give it a try. A little underdone, actually. You know what, I have a better idea. Since this is pretty liquidy and that can be reduced, I'm just gonna leave the lid off and I'll put this on saute high and that should boil this liquid. And I think if I boil it for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, we'll be perfect and I can just check the beans. See, there you go. We are already boiling. This thing really can do every type of cooking technique. Pretty impressive. All right, check that out. Now we are fully cooked and reduced. Double whammy. Let me just show you real quick. Perfect beans right there. This is what you're looking for. You don't want them broken, perfectly whole bean, but you want them nice and tender on the inside. It's beautiful. So like I said earlier, I really wanna put this machine to the test to see if it can replace all of your appliances. So what I'm gonna do right now is make a roasted salsa to go with this chicken. So see how the air fryer setting works on just roasting up some vegetables. For the roasted veggies, I'm going to take half an onion. This is the other half that came from the roasted chicken and just slice that up into small chunks. And then I added that to a bowl along with a container of cherry tomatoes and coated them in some oil so they roast up nice in the air fryer. So I took a piece of tin foil and just sliced an entire bowl of garlic right in half, added that to the tin foil and covered it in oil, and then just added a tiny bit of water to help steam so the garlic doesn't burn in the roasting process. All right, so a layer of tin foil because I don't want tomato juice dripping through the bottom. And then we will just put this garlic right in the center and that will roast in there as well. And then into Pressure cooker, air fryer. Air fry, we're gonna go 400 again, that's the max. Let's do 13 minutes. And we're on. All right, 13 minutes, let's see what happening. Okay, not bad, we're getting some roasty action there. Looking really good, I think just like five more minutes and we'll be perfect. I'm proud of you, air fryer, pressure cooker. All right, let's check it now. Oh, I am very happy with that. Garlic, not sure. Let's check that real quick. Da, 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 da. Okay, could be roasted a little longer, but it's still 
fork tender. That's all I need right there. So this is a very exciting salsa right here. We've got our rehydrated peppers. I'll de-seed a few of those just to make it a little less spicy. Roasted garlic, roasted tomatoes and onions, cilantro, lime, salt, blend. Let's do it. Thickness. Uh, could be thinner, could add more of that pepper liquid, but let's taste it. The moment of truth. Yes. Yes is all I can say for that. I made a lot of salsas in my life. That's up there for one of the best in the spice levels. Not easy to nail it down, especially when I was just throwing in a bunch of random peppers. Oh, that's perfection right there. It's time to bring these elements together. We're making taquitos, which is a rolled crispy taco pretty much. And I'm gonna use the beans, I'm gonna use the chicken, and I'm gonna use the salsa with just a little bit of cheese. That's pretty much how it's gonna go. And we're gonna throw it in the air fryer and get it crispy and delicious. Chicken, beans, salsa, cheese. This is like some pepper jack style cheese. Corn tortillas. Let's make some taquitos. I make a lot of Mexican food, but I am no expert on this dish. So I don't know what the traditional fillings are, but I can tell you that this filling looks bomb. So I'm just gonna take this, put it in here, roll them up and get it ready for the air fryer. As I say, I'm not an expert. Well, yeah, I am certainly not. These are already broken because I didn't heat them up before. You can see they just like, pop open. So what I'm gonna do is heat the tortillas first in this pan real quick, just to soften them up a bit and then they'll hold much better. So taquitos are fried in oil, of course. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure I spray this down, give them a coating, and then I'll place these on here. I'll only be able to get four. And I do wanna give them a nice spray. This is just canola oil, and that will help with the crispiness so it doesn't just dry out in the air fryer. I think I'm just gonna stick with 400. That's been lucky number 400, highest it goes. And we'll start with 12 minutes and go from there. Oh, those are done. Those are crispy. Love it. In an ideal world, I would plate these things up all nice and fancy with some sour cream, some lettuce, some salsa, but I don't have those things on me, so I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of that salsa to give it the official taste test. I think the last time I had one of these was in like a 7-Eleven. Is that even, is that a taquito? Those things that are on those spinning wheels, a horrible version of this? These are great. I can't complain about that. The air fryer did a great job getting this tortilla nice and crispy without having to deep fry, which is always a bonus because deep frying is a pain. So overall, great recipes coming together for a delicious final dish. I'm making bao buns for two reasons. One, because the next recipe is crispy pork belly, so I'm preparing to enjoy that pork belly to the fullest, and it needs some type of vehicle. And two, there's a setting on that pressure cooker called steam. We all know what steam is, but I've never used the steam setting on that, so I wanted to put that to the test and see how the steam setting works, and some steam bao buns just felt like the perfect way to do that. So first I have to make a dough, which is really simple. I'm gonna take out my stand mixer, but you can of course do this by hand and I'm gonna add one cup of warm water, two teaspoons of instant yeast, one tablespoon of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of neutral oil, I'm using an avocado oil, and then three cups of all-purpose flour and one teaspoon of baking powder. And I just let that knead in the mixer for about 10 minutes and if you're doing this by hand, give it a good 10 minute kneading. Once the dough is nice and smooth, I took out a bowl and put in a little bit more oil and threw my dough in there to let it prove for around one to two hours until it doubled in size. Now that our dough is doubled in size, I'm going to take it out of the bowl and roll it out to about a quarter inch thickness. 
And then I'm gonna start cutting rounds, which will ultimately be folded in half to make our bow buns. Once the rounds are cut, I've got some square parchment pieces right here, which will help create a non-stick barrier in our pressure cooker. And I just put a layer of oil on the interior of the bow bun so these things actually open up and don't stick together and just fold them up and let them proof a little longer so they get nice and fluffy. So these have been going for about 45 minutes and you can see they've puffed up just a little bit. And the Instant Pot comes with this thing right here, which I'll place right on top of that as my steaming tray. And I'll just see how many I can get on there. These will puff up, so I need to leave a little room. All right, so five is my limit right now since I don't have a double tray. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Okay, so we're going in. I put some water in there, just about a cup of water to steam. Oh, son of a. This is what I do for you guys to film this shit. So when you're cooking under pressure, this thing right here, this valve is locked, keeping all of that steam inside, which is why your food cooks so fast. But when we're steaming, we want some of that to come out because we don't want to pressure cook these buns. So I'm just going to press this and that opens the valve and lets the, the steam rise. So it's still going to steam in there, but it's not going to pressurize. Check those out. That was a bit of a guess and I mean, those came out perfect. Let's investigate. Gotta try one of these hot off the press. Wow, bouncy, fluffy. Oh my God. This thing continues to impress. Pork belly in the air fryer has always been on my radar. I've seen a bunch of video recipes online, but I was always a little hesitant to actually incorporate it into past videos because there were so many steps involved to first get it tender, then crispy, just solely in the air fryer. But now that we have this combo package, I feel like it's built for pork belly because first you gotta pressure cook it, get it nice and tender, and then we can use the air fryer to crisp up that skin and get a really nice crust on this. So first things first, let's season this up and get it in the pressure cooker. All right, pork belly seasoned up. Close that off. We are gonna pressure cook this on high for, let's do, it's pretty thin pork belly. Let's do 32 minutes. All right, it smells incredible. Let's check the tenderness of, yeah, it's, it's pretty bouncy here. Seems pretty tender, just gonna take these out. We just gotta make sure that this is nice and tender before we move on to the crispy layer. That's perfect, 30 minutes in the pressure cooker, got the job done. So one thing I wanna do before we get that thing nice and crispy is turn this into a sauce using a really simple trick. I'm gonna make a quick cornstarch slurry to thicken up that sauce. Two tablespoons of cornstarch, two tablespoons of water. You make this slurry so your corn, oh damn it. So your cornstarch doesn't clump up in the sauce. I needed to put the lid on much better. So I turn the Instant Pot on to saute, and you can see we're already boiling. And then we're just gonna add in our slurry and let that thicken. And that's pretty much like an instant hoisin sauce, which is gonna be an incredible topping for our bao buns. Wow, instant thickening. Oh my God, it's like a general chow sauce. All right, final step. I've scored the fat on that and I'm just going to air fry this. Pop this on, air fry, 12 minutes, 400. So we've got four minutes left. Check this out. <laughs> so we actually have a bit of an issue here because I want it to be rendered a little more and a little crispy, but it's starting to burn. All right, I'm gonna turn the temp down to 340 and continue to air fry. Okay, gave it another few minutes. <laughs> oh, shit. Burnt my finger on the side of that. 
So the skin was already cut off on the pork belly, so I didn't get that traditional looking crispy skin pork belly. But look at the juiciness on that. Oh my God. I'm gonna wait to taste this until it gets the full treatment. So what I have here are some pickled radish that I had in the fridge, the sauce, some cilantro from the Mexican food earlier, and the bao buns. That's really all we need. Pretty impressive that every element other than the radish was made in that thing over there. Here goes nothing. Wow. That might be the best pork belly I've ever made. I know I've been saying that a lot for these recipes, but results are being produced. The only thing that this thing is missing are some peanuts. Would love some peanuts on that. Mm, okay, the question is how do I not eat these other three bao buns right now? All right, so my goal for the next two recipes is one, to use up as many ingredients as possible since I have some leftovers. And two, I still wanna to continue to push this thing. See how many different cooking techniques the Instant Pot Air Fryer can handle. So I came up with a recipe just now, well actually yesterday, to use the leftover dough from the bao buns mixed with the leftover filling from the taquitos to make a Mexican pot sticker. And pot stickers are the best dumplings. They're the ones where you fry off first the then you steam them and I thought it'd be perfect to try in the air fryer because you can actually fry things, which we haven't done. So first I'm gonna roll out this leftover dough in just a little bit of oil so it doesn't stick. Really nice and thin, about an eighth of an inch, a little thinner than the bao buns. Then I'm gonna cut a bunch of circles again and I'm gonna start adding my taco filling and then just crimping in the edges to make my pot stickers. You can wrap these up however you wanna make your dumplings or your pot stickers. So these didn't really want to stay closed, I think because the bread had yeast in it. It's just a little more difficult, but they'll definitely work. So I've got this on saute mode. This should be pretty hot. Got some avocado oil here. The one thing I always hated about these Instant Pots was how they weren't flat. The center actually pops up a little bit, but it will be fine, I think, in this case, because I can just put the dumplings around the outside where they'll still get. See how the oil drips to the outer ring? I'll just keep it over there and I'll just watch these for a bit. All right, you can see those type of crust you're looking for on the bottom. So we're ready to steam. So what I'll do is gently pour in some water. Just a little bit. Cancel that pressure cook on high. So let's just do nine minutes since they've been cooking. All right, this thing just hit zero. So I'm just gonna release the steam. Oh. Okay. Oh, I'm an idiot. Okay, I've got to try this again. I'm sorry. I totally forgot to release the steam valve like I did for the bao buns because we're steaming these. We're not pressure cooking these. I contained all of the moisture in there through pressure cooking and they turned into a bit of a, a mushy mess. So I'm just gonna make these again real quick. I'll roll some out and we'll see if the other method works. All right, round two, we're crispy. I could only make a measly two <laughs> dumplings with what I had. A little bit of water. Pressure cook eight minutes and we'll just make sure that this is locked so the steam comes out. So this is pretty cool. It's telling me that my food is burnt right now. That just kind of popped off. So let's see what's going on. All right, those look a little better. Are they burnt? No, they're fine. There's no water left. All right, so that thing actually knew what it was talking about. That was a good indicator that these were done. All right, I'm kind of over this experiment, but we'll give it a try and see <laughs> what the results are. You know, the actual pot sticker technique work great. When there's no more water, there's no more steam, then you continue to fry the end, but the whole thing is cooked through, which did work, but the actual dumpling is subpar. So, eh, worth a shot at least. So there was a dish that I got in a sushi restaurant about two years ago that was delicious. So it was this crispy rice block where the chef took some rice and he deep fried it and then he topped it with a bunch of stuff. And I thought that'd be a great way to end this to use the pork belly that I have left over. So what I did earlier this morning was I cooked some rice and I cooked it in the pressure cooker. Get it on. Four minutes, let's go. All right, not the best rice, but it will do. Now that I've got some rice, I took a little baking tin and I sprayed that down with some oil and packed in a layer of rice. 
Then I spread on some of that pork belly. I just chopped that up into little pieces, followed by some of that sauce that was solidified from putting it in the fridge, and then a few slices of jalapeno just for an extra kick, and then packed on some more rice onto the top. And I actually used one of those cappuccino tapper things to really pack this in nice and tight. So I sprayed down this plate, put the rice, pop that on the steaming thing, whatever you want to call that. And we'll pop on the air fryer lid. Air fry, let's try not full blast. 375 for 15 minutes. All right, it's been eight minutes. Let's see what's going on. Ooh. Okay, so not much color. Oh yeah, super crispy. Wow. I want to crank up the temp to just 400 for, you know, the final, I don't know, four minutes. I want to see if I can get a little color on that thing. All right. A little browning, but super crispy. Crispy rice cake, taste test. That's fun. Mmm, mmm. Look at the crispiness on that corner right there. Wow. I need that corner piece in my mouth. Really nice, and what I like most about this is the potential for innovation here. Adding different fillings, adding different sauces, toppings. There's a lot of directions you can go with this dish, but the air fryer definitely worked on those crispy levels. Wow, whoa, okay. That was the crispy corner. Boom, Instant Pot, you are a beast. And I'm sure there's gonna be so many more brands that are hopping onto this trend and adding on the air fryer. And just in general, this technology advancing, it's really exciting. And I think what's great about this type of appliance is that if you don't have a fully functioning kitchen, you really can get away with a lot with this one thing. If you're in college, if you have a dorm room, this baby, you can do a lot. You saw today, I didn't use anything else and I produced some amazing food. So it definitely works great, and it's also just easy to use, which I love about these types of appliances, air fryers, instant pots. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you want to see more experiments with this, just let me know below in the comments, and make sure you follow me at Life by Mike G on Instagram to see all the recipe testing and behind-the-scenes action in the studio. And until next time, get cooking.